My name is Alan Brody, and I have been running uh, the I Breakfast, which was a prototypical uh, startup venue for the dot com generation. We started at the beginning, and now we have a variety of startup uh, forums, including this one that we have tonight called Startup Loser. I am about to release a book called Are You Fundable? So I'm going to begin by uh, you know, introducing what that book's about because that's really the, the you know the, the prism that I look at these plans through. Are you fundable? Now, by are you fundable? Um, there's lots of ways to ra raise money, but what everybody dreams about is getting money from an investor. My friends and family, Donald Trump, Mark Cuban, Damon John, somebody who loves your idea so much. They're going to give you money. That's what everyone dreams about. That happens about 1% of the time. And even then, it's not necessarily a great dream. Because that person is not giving you money. They're investing in you for a return. And I'm saying that because each plan has its own reality, its own destiny, and its own problems. So um, I like to use that as a, as a baseline to help each person understand the, the logical um, destiny of, of their business plan. So I'll begin by saying from the perspective of fundability, what is fundable? What would get a big time investor to say, yes, I want to invest in this, theoretically? I have to start out by saying, Jennifer, you would be considered in the running, the running to be fundable. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> but, if you haven't read Hemingway, I'll remind you about the old man in the sea. The bigger the fish, the harder it is to bring it ashore. You know the story? No. Well, the English gets a little better. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, actually, the English is very simple. The old man goes out to sea and he catches the biggest fish of his life. So once he catches it, it does come to the attention of the local sharks in the sea. By the time he brings the fish ashore, all he has is a big fish bone. So that's the problem of having a great idea that is theoretically fundable, is can you bring it ashore? So I'm giving you the good news and the bad news. Um, Colin, um, you have a great story. Mm -hmm. uh, you haven't crystallized the concept, as Professor Nakanami said, but that's okay, because we can work there. The story is very interesting, and I'm going to tell you why the story is interesting. Um, when you're a startup, I mean, when you're a first-time entrepreneur, mm -hmm. there's a saying in our business called, we invest in the jockey, not the horse. Have you heard this before? What yes. it means is, uh, a great jockey can make any horse, any horse with reasonable prospects run better than a lousy jockey with a great horse. In fact, a lousy jockey could probably hurt. And there's a great story, um, it's a Steve Jobs story, if any one of you, any of you have read his biography. Uh, but at one point, his startup after Apple, which is a company called Next, which is a, getting ready, it was moribund, it was going out of business. He needed 20 million, well, he needed 20 million dollars, actually he needed whatever he could get to stay in business. And he met uh, Ross Perot, who's a very wealthy Texas um, investor. And Ross gave him, met him after one meeting, offered him $20 million, way more than Steve Jobs had ever imagined he would get. And afterwards he said, I bet on the jockey, the jockey goes out and finds the right horse. So the story has that potential to present yourself as a great jockey. That's good. And that would transcend uh, an idea that is not necessarily on its own fundable. Uh, however, the story also defines you. Okay? You really have to understand what that story is telling people. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what the story tells people? Sort of. Go ahead. Tell me. Uh, Take away. My story, mm -hmm. like, would it? Uh, <clears throat> well, just like kind of shapes your, you know, your character and your overall image. So the story goes like this: <laughs> Blue collar kid mm -hmm. joined the Air, Air Force, loaded weapons on airplanes. Mm -hmm. Now, as a real estate, getting an MBA. To an investor, 
Here's what it sounds like. Air Force, right? Mm -hmm. Fly the plane. You were fly the plane. You were in arms for violence mm -hmm. in the airplane. That's going to stick in their minds. Because at the, remember, investors have all these ideas of hierarchies and, and um, uh, matrices. Yeah. So they're going to say, ah, the Air Force, mm -hmm. the top gun is the top gun. Uh -huh. You were you supplying mm -hmm. the guns mm -hmm. to these guys. That defines you. So if you're going to tell that story, you're going to want to work on the idea that you know how to be an arms merchant to the industry that you're in. No matter what the story is, that's what they're waiting to hear. If you do not deliver, you're not going to get it done. Okay. Okay? That is your story. Okay. Stick to it. So, so, the, so what you identified is a, an opportunity to provide the arms for the battles that are taking place in these growth areas. Now, if an investor, or anybody who's going to work with you, who's lending you money, or whatever, is going to like that because you are military trained, which sets you apart from every other Schmendre mm -hmm. who came out of business school and so on and so on. Let me tell you about, never underestimate the power of military training. I, I used to hire people at a, at, a, at a computer chain, and all we hired for our tech department were military trained techs. We loved them. Never complained, did their work, just love them, all right? So, um, you need to crystallize what the problem was, that either the big companies don't specialize, they can't service them, or because it's kind of on the edge, because these buildings are being sold before they go up. Okay? Congratulations.